but to be where we are is it's absolutely phenomenal achievement. But the start of the season we were favourites to go down, yeah. and that's the message I say to the players. You can give the opportunity for fans to dream, to mm -hmm. the owner to dream. Paul, thank you very much for having us along. Um, big question firstly, obviously we're here at Reading, it's a wonderful training complex, mm. a magnificent place to, to play traders ever. Safe to say when you first came in, it was a perilous situation that you managed to Still is. navigate yeah. through. <laughs> I was going to say, it's marginally less choppy waters now, but what was it about Reading that brought you back in? Um, listen, I think it was, um, it was a strange one, because obviously the previous manager, um, Panovic was obviously struggling at the time, <clears throat> and um, it was funny, I was sitting indoors, I was just, on, it was a Friday night, funny enough, I remember it so well, because we had a golf tournament on the, on the Saturday, <laughs> and I was just doing, well my, prepped. I, was, I was doing my wedges, I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I just get my grooves and my wedges sorted out, and then I got a phone call from um, the owner, and said, listen, the manager's going to um, call it a day after the, the okay. game, which was away at Preston. Mm -hmm. Because I lived in the Wirral, obviously I'm not far from Preston. Obviously, Thomas plays for for Reading, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he said, "Would you mind, you know, taking a game on Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, which was obviously Birmingham at, um, at home?" Um, so it was just, it was all a bit of a blur to me. I was, spoke to the missus. Yeah. She said, "What's that?" I said, "I think he only wants me to go and take a couple of games in, you know, at uh, Reading as an interim manager." So she, she's like, yeah, why not? Why not? I think she just wants to get me <laughs> get out of the house. Get yourself out of the house. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. I think she, she wants to get me out of the house. So listen, I went up there, watched the game, which they won. Mm -hmm. um, drove straight back down from uh, Preston straight into um, into this fantastic training ground, and uh, <laughs> then you, you then, you, then you get you get the result on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and it was funny because just. Getting out of drilling and back, you know. Mm -hmm. Listen, I've been out of football for eight years. You know? Was there a particular reason for that? I think maybe I got a bit despondent, especially after the um, Blackpool situation. Uh -huh. You know, obviously, um, kind of losing your job because you're doing your pro license wasn't an ideal way mm. to get sacked. And you know, we left the team in like, 13th place in the championship. Um, so I think after that, we're kind of a little bit. Mm, not is it, is it for me, but mm. you know, I may just take a back seat. You know what I mean? And I, and I kind of just. You know, you go for one or two jobs after, and then you don't get a look in, and then you know you start doing a bit more punditry and TV stuff, and you think, well, maybe, maybe that's the way forward. Mm. You know, less stressful. Yeah. You know, my daughter was obviously in, in uni in London, mm -hmm. um, so it kind of fitted well. I was getting my golf in, I was going to see my daughter, I was watching Thomas play, my mm. son plays golf, so I was doing a lot of things where I felt pretty relaxed, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, I did kind of think, you know, you never lose it because it's, it's in your blood, mm -hmm. you know, and you always feel as a manager that you want to. Keep them to prove yourself, but after three or four years out of it, Dave, it was just like I'm comfortable. Mm. You know, I'm comfortable. You know, I can sleep at night and not getting many grey hairs. Pestered. Uh, well, <laughs> it is because it's a nightmare. Because you know, as a manager, as soon as you open your eyes, you think about football. Yeah. That what time it is. You know, every time I speak to my assistant Alex Ferrari, I say, "What time did you get this morning?" She said, yeah. oh, four, oh, five. What do you think about formations, injuries? It's literally, literally from minute one. It's minute one. The eyes you open. Just, uh, just can't get away from it. So you know, to not have that. You know, for eight years was quite nice. So, yeah. you know, I do. So, does that come flooding straight <clears throat> back once you get back on the touchline? Is it suddenly I'm here? Even though with your playing career, your managerial mm. career, you're still stood there. Is it necessarily proving a point to yourself more than anything else? Um, yeah, I think it is. I think I've always been one where, you know, so I, 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 I came into management. I went straight to Macclesfield Town. Mm. You know, when it, which was the lowest obviously team in the league, and we were twelve points adrift. Mm. Um, in League Two, you know, you see a lot of players who played at the level that I've played at go straight to bigger clubs, higher clubs, whatever got investment money. Mm. <clears throat> you know, I, I felt that you know, for some like me having to go to, no disrespect to Macclesfield, the bottom of the table, you know, was I can, I can completely understand what yeah. you're saying given yeah. the career that you'd had. Yeah. yeah, and you look at the, the likes of other players, it's, it's just it's completely different. Look mm. at Sol Campbell. Yeah, have to go do exactly the same. Uh, but for me, it was just a case of. If I can keep them up in that league, then it puts me on the on the, out there as a manager. Mm -hmm. You know, it really, really does. And um, managed to do that. They went to MK Dons, won a double there first year, got promoted. And then I went to Blackburn in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. um, and that was probably too early for me. I, okay. I don't think I was ready for that yet. Um, 
So, but I enjoyed the experience. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to be the first Black Premier League manager is still something, you know. It's a, it's a <coughs> landmark yeah, it's moment, a landmark, isn't it? Yeah, it's and opens landmark. doors for, for yeah. people that you've probably never met or never will meet. No. It, it shows them what's capable, yeah, what capable of. Yeah, exactly. Right? So I think that's probably a lot to do with it, you know, that landmark of being the first one. Um, but I was never ready for it. But mm. I learned a lot from it. I mean, you know, you make a lot of mistakes and you learn from it. Um, but most of the jobs I've been in, I've been quite successful. If you actually look at the kind of parameters that I've got to work in, mm. the budgets and all that type of stuff. So coming away from it for eight years, I felt, have I left anything behind? And the only probably thing I'll probably say is that I wish I had more time in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. And if I could go back now, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd probably be a better manager than I was, was then. Um, but those thoughts were kind of joining the way as the years went by. And, yeah. um, so when this came up, I was very unsure whether to do it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, after three or four games here, um, I think remember we got beat 4 0 by Forrest. And uh, I'm thinking, I need to find a manager. Cause <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this four games have had enough. Yeah, four yeah. games. I'm trying to find someone else. And then the, um, then the owner said, Listen, Paul, do you want to take it to you in the season? And, mm. you know, once you get to know the players and you know, you know, what they're all about and the fact that they need to survive in this league. It's yeah. so important because it's not just the players, it's the tea lady, it's the staff, it's, it's all the, the club admin, as a whole, the club isn't it? As a whole, mm. You know, and um, that was a challenge for me. If, if I can achieve that, then that's my job done. And we, we managed to do it. Mm. And um, I went to Barbados for a couple of weeks and I, was, I knew the phone call was coming. Yeah. I just didn't know. So what. did you, at the end <clears> of the season, was it, thanks, that was wonderful. Mm. And was it that open-ended of speak to you <laughs> soon or keep your phone on? <laughs> uh, well, it's funny, it was, because um, once we finished the season, obviously, and I said to Alex, listen, I might see you next year, I might not. <laughs> uh, I'll have to have a chat with uh, the owner and uh, Di Young, the CEO here, um, and go from there. And then obviously, as soon as I got to Barbados, phone was ringing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll give that one a miss. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't answer that one yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I said, listen, would you want to come back? And I said, listen, it was difficult for me because I knew this year was weird embargo. Mm -hmm. And I've heard of the word embargo a lot of times in clubs. Yeah. You know what I mean? But because you've been out of it, you kind of think, ah, that's only going to be there, be fine. Yeah. So what is that? In the middle <clears> of it, so what is it then, an embargo to a manager? Hands tied? Yeah, it's... Cut off at the knees? Oh, yeah. it's cut off at the knees. It, mm -hmm. is, you know, it really, really is. It's, um, and I think unless you've actually experienced it, you know, you, you can never kind of have an opinion on it, basically. And there's B licence, A licence, Pro licence. They don't teach you to, to manage an embargo. Wow. They don't. When you talk about, you know, the start of the season, uh -huh. you know, we had about eight or nine trialists, yeah. you know, trying to build a football team to prepare for the for the championship, which is very demanding, mm -hmm. as, you, as you know. You know, we, we've got the lowest budget, paying the lowest wages. Mm. You can't no transfers, everything's got to be a free or a loan. Oh. And, <clears throat> and you've got restrictions. You're, 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 you're restricted to trade. Mm -hmm. And, you know, listen, I think if, at the end of the day, we have to take responsibility for that because we, you know, as a club, you know, we try to go up. And yeah, it's the club's fiscal responsibility, which yeah. can come back to bite you, as it has done, as you say. Of course it yeah. does. Yeah, we have to take responsibility. We try mm. to go up, we didn't work, we got punished by the EFL, and now it's a case of me and Alex, you know what I mean, picking up the baton and trying to make sure you know, we can stay in this league. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've basically kind of been fishing from the bottom of the pond, to be fair. Yeah. And we look in January and, you know, can we strengthen? No, we can't, because we can't really buy new players. Mm -hmm. So we've got what we've got. But what we've got, we've got a great, honest bunch of lads. We've got some quality, we've got some togetherness and, and we've got the fight because we all understand the situation. Mm. You know, the owner understands the situation, the fans understand the situation, which which can help. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about Derby last year. Yeah. And they nearly stayed up. They just got galvanised by the fans and... The club, I think we're in that similar type of situation. And it's that one where you talk about the different expectations, and the, I suppose the fans being on board is the important thing mm. because you look at the start of the season and suddenly everyone's going, "Oh well, embargo, no worries, we can <laughs> we can plough on, we can we can mm. operate the uh, the upper end of the championship, mm. given where you are now in mid table." Is, is that a, a realistic kind of portion of the championship that you think you should find yourselves in? Is that something that you want to get out there when you're, you're doing your press and your media and your post and your pre-match stuff? I think, I think, I think, listen, I think when you have such a good start, like anyone, mm. put, you know, you hear all this, you know, white noise, oh, we're going to go into playoffs or we're going to, you know, I've been in the game long enough, Dave, mm. you know, and I, and I knew the situation. Once you get one or two injuries, you know, you think about what we've achieved at the time, you know, no Scott Dan, mm -hmm. no Liam Moore, 
No Naby Sarr. Big names. The big names. Mm. You know, we're playing the 20 year old kid from Mets at the, at the back. Mm -hmm. Tom Holmes and Tom Mack when they're tw early 21, 22. Mm. So basically, we've got a yid, you know, who's a right back playing centre half. Yeah. So if you think about what we've actually achieved by moving players all in different positions that they're not accustomed to, to, to be where we are is it's absolutely phenomenal, mm. but, you know, um, a phenomenal achievement. But the start of the season, we were favourites to go down. Yeah. And that's the message I say to the players listen, you know, you, you won't, you're not thinking to stay in this league. So when people start talking about oh, the other end of it, the other yeah, end of yeah. it, you go, listen, let's, let's be realistic. It's great, <laughs> because, it's great because you can give the opportunity for fans to dream, to mm -hmm. the owner to dream. You know, I mean, I mean, we were playing now and the fans were singing, we're top of the league. Now often do they get to sing that about being the football <laughs> yeah. club. But it's true though, but yeah, for that yeah. one day, that one weekend, they had that joy of saying it. And, mm. um, but I think realistically looking at us at, as uh, where we are, I think we just need to stay in the league by hook or by crook. Mm. The league is very concentrated. It's not like you've got two or three who are kind of coming away. It's yeah. very, very tight. You can lose three, you can be in the bottom three, you can win three, you can be in the playoffs. Knocking on the door again. You yeah. can knock on the door again. So, mm. uh, and every team's much as much the same. You take away probably Burnley, Sheffield United, who are very top teams, um, West Brom. It's, 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 you can beat anybody, and yeah. you can see. Um, so there's no reason to be fearful of anything, mm -hmm. you know, and um, we've just got to keep playing and keep trying to pick up as many points as we can. Get back to it very shortly in the Championship yeah. after this break, and we're going to come to that break in due course, but it would be remiss to sit here with a player of your stature, given what's going on over in the World Cup and what England have been mm. up to, um, at times entertaining and, and, and making us sit nervously on the edge of our seats. What have you made of, of the team so far over in Qatar? I, I think the most important thing, you know, when you go away to these big tournaments is to get through the group stage first, mm. by hook or by crook. Listen, mm. looking at the teams that they had in that group, you fancy them. Um, and they got a bit of criticism based on the USA game. Um, it's not about that, you know mm. what I mean? Someone's always have an opinion. Who should be playing, who should not be playing? You lose a game, this is that, this is that. Um, but I think South is too, you know, experienced for that now. Um, I love the fact that England manages <coughs> Southie to you as a former yeah. teammate. Yeah, Southie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's mad, the it? man that's got like the biggest job other yeah, than Southie. the Prime Minister in England <laughs> and is under the most scrutiny. He's a former teammate of yours, of course. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just and we play things together, we played Middlesbrough together. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're very, very good friends. And um, but I just think this, he's done an incredible job there. You know, you think 2018, nearly won the World Cup, mm. got beat to Italy in the Euros. So um, you know, we all dream and he can go one better this year. And I mm. look, and I look at and I look at the. The teams in it, mm -hmm. and I listen. The Senegal game, they had two good chances early on. Senegal, but apart, apart from that, we look comfortable in that game. Mm. This is the test, isn't it? The French game. Yeah. This, this, I, I look at the French team as the probably best team in the, in this league. I saw Brazil last night, and you know, obviously playing against the team that they played, they look good at times. Yeah. But I just look at what we've got, and I look at the power and Foden, Kane, you know, Rashford. No, Bellingham, we've got some top, top quality players. I know the French have, but um, mm -hmm. you've got to start Mbappé. Yeah. If I look at, if I look at all these teams, <laughs> Mbappé, Neymar, Messi. Yeah. Superstars. You, superstars. Mm. If you can stop them, you'll have half a chance. But um, listen, we, we expected to get to the quarterfinals. We knew the path was going to be to meet France if they got to, the French got to, the France got to the stage, which they have done. Mm. But I, I don't see anyone go, any wow team where I go, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we can easily take care of the French. Um, but it's exciting times, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. It really is. It's exciting times. And um, it's tough because we've had to bring our game back on Saturday early so we can watch yes, the England Yes, to get back to watch the, to watch <laughs> the, the game. game. Yeah. yeah, so um, no, that's all what, what, What's it like as, as, a, as an ex-international former captain, of course, mm. the first black player to captain England? Mm. To, can you watch it objectively as, as a fan? Can you, can you not get caught up in the hysteria? Um, yeah, you get, as, as a player, you do, yeah. because you, you're, so, you're so, I don't I still, I still think I'm an England player. <laughs> you know, I don't watch the England team as a fan, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, I still think as if I was out there and, you know, I'm always analysing the midfield players, what they're doing, what they should be doing, that type of stuff. And I feel nervous for them because... You, you do? Know, yeah, I do, because I just go back to my experience in Euro 96, 98. Um, we got so close in 96. Mm. You know, 98, I thought we had the perfect team to win the World Cup with the players that we had, the mm. leaders that we had, the characters, you know, I looked around that change and I thought, yeah, you could just sense it from everybody. Mm -hmm. So to finish the way that finish was disappointing. So when I see the lads now at this kind of stage, I was mm. like, come on boys, come on boys, we've got to do this boys, you know what I mean? Because I know it felt for me, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, was it, was it in 
by what you've said there, were you nervous as a player in games such as this? Because you talk about Euro 96, mm. you talk about France 98, you talk about Euros in 2000. And I'm obviously remembering these from watching them on TV mm. and watching these huge, huge football matches on TV. Mm. And you see the players walk out, you see them sing the national anthem. Can you give us a flavour at all of what is going through your mind at that stage and what that actually feels like? I, th I think the hardest thing is just the night before for me. Yeah. Because I always have these like kind of scenarios going around my head. You know, what if we go one nil down? What if I do this? What if I do that? Mm. You know, you've always got these little pictures that you kind of imagine, you know, when you go out onto the pitch. And that's mm. what I always try to do as a player, looking at the Holland game or even the Germany game. Mm. You know, how, how do I see myself playing? Who am I up against? Yeah. What type of play is him? How can I get the best of him? All these things. And then when you stand up there and sing the National Anthem, you've just got this horrible feeling in your stomach because you know you're just like a minute away from, you know... It all going off. All, all going off. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's yeah. the thing. So when you're sitting in the National Anthem and you look up and you see your wife and your kids there and you're thinking, don't mess up, don't make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be it's, emotional moving, though. It, it, it is, it is to be fair. Yeah. It is. And, um, but as soon as that whistle goes, you're there to do a job. It's war, you? isn't it? Yeah. It's war. You're there to do a job and <clears throat> that's why you're there, to do a job. And... Um, but it does get nervous, mm. you know. I, I, mostly like after the game, especially after the Germany game, was was emotional. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you know it, it's come to an end. Mm -hmm. You know, we had such a good journey, and going back to the hotel and seeing all the players, and mm. you know, it's not nice. And they're leaving with their bags. And, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's horrible. I used to hate it. The it's little journey's it. over in the sense yeah. you all go back and try yeah. and try and process what you've seen. It, it, it's it's funny that you say that now because you look at the, perhaps the fallout of of the Euros and. Mm penalties and, and these iconic young players that we've got that have done wonderful things both mm. on and off the pitch and the likes of Bukai Saka and Marcus Rashford and, and it, it is, it's a different era <clears throat> of course because of the access to these players mm. via social media platforms and mm. you, you look at those players doing their utmost for the country, mm. the team as, as, a, as a whole coming up short because you don't get over the line to win and then you see the abuse that is held their way. What, what was your take on that as, as a player from a slightly different generation that I presume would have had to deal with similar issues in that, but in a, in a different... There's, there's nobody yeah. tweeting you, there's nobody sending you an Instagram post in the mid to late 90s saying what they think about you, is no, there? Listen, I, th I think for us in our time, you know, I think it was actually a lot worse mm. because you, you're right, there was, there was no platform, there's no social media. You can look at things and people can criticise mm. you and you don't have to read it. You have to read social media. If you want to come off your platform, yeah. don't read it. Mm. In my time, when you go and played football, you couldn't get away from it because you had yeah. to experience it. People were actually verbally shouting racial abuse mm. at you. You know, people were chucking bananas on the pitch. So you couldn't just like shut the door and it would go away. Yeah. Every time you went out, it's physically there. It's physically there. Mm. So there was no. So you had to be tough to that. You have to, and it's tough when I'm an 18 year old boy mm -hmm. playing for West Ham when you get racially abused. Mm -hmm. But I think. For me, it was different because we had this situation where we grew up with it as a kid. It wasn't yeah. just about football society. Even when you're 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 at school, um, we grew up with that. So it kind of toughened me individually um, as a person. And I'm married to a white lady, mm. and I've been for 32 years. So the amount of abuse I got back in the day because yeah, I, I was black yeah. and she was white, Claire, uh, we got a lot of abuse for that. So it kind of toughened me up that way. I think we've done a lot since then to try and, you know, rectify these things. You're never going to get rid of racism. It's always going to be there, Dave. Mm -hmm. As much as we try, you know, we've got to be honest enough, it's, a, it's not a football thing, it's a society thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think with these players now, they're not to endure what we get to endure. Yeah. So we've got better as far as levels of racism have got to, but it's still, they're having to experience something, what they're trying to put out there to actually say to people, listen, we have to understand racism. We have to be educated on what it is and what mm -hmm. it means. And you always get these bigots or idiots who are going to write things on on, on, the, on these social media yeah, uh, yeah. platforms and it's it's tough, it's mm -hmm. tough but you don't have to look at it, yeah. you know, it, shouldn't, it, shouldn't be, though, yeah. it shouldn't be, I know we're talking the 21st century, you <clears> should <throat> be able to, you know, say you shouldn't, have to, shouldn't be able to look at this or you shouldn't be able to do this. We've kind of gone through all that and the likes of me, Johnny Barnes, people like Sylvia Regis, Ian Wright, Les Ferdinand, we've gone through all this, you know what I mean, mm. to try and make it better for this the younger generation coming through and it's just... Is it getting worse? No, it's just in a different format. Mm -hmm. And it's how you deal with that format. It's not nice, mm -hmm. but hopefully, you know, it toughens you up and we just have to move on. It's safe to say that it does feel like these players have, as you, as you said, mm. Paul, stepped forward beyond that. Mm. They understand that 
fundamentally there's a country here that loves the very fibre of their being and want the best mm. for them. And then you look at the young, I mean, I'm talking about young players there, but then I, I presume the examples, to, I mean, you look at Jude Bellingham, the way he's mm. just stepped onto the world stage mm -hmm. and you look at what he's done in the World Cup so far and he, he looks like he really belongs, doesn't he, with world-class players in a world-class setting. He does, and you know, listen, I saw him when he was at Birmingham, mm. and I thought it was a great move for him to go to play in Dortmund. As, as I said, when I played in in Italy, in Milan, Inter Milan, I can't say Milan, got to say Inter Milan. <laughs> Sorry, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of English players going out there, mm. and you had to speak Italian, otherwise you couldn't, you know, you had to emerge yourself into the culture. Mm. Uh, nowadays, you go from Sancho, there's a lot of young kids are now going out there and yeah. experiencing the self in, in, in European. It helps because they all speak English now, it's very cosmopolitan. So um, what was it like back then then? Was it, was it properly it was, fish it out of water taste? It, it was terrible, <laughs> because I mean, you know, for two months, three months, I couldn't speak Italian. And then you lose it, we lost the first three or four games, mm. and you're sitting at the end of the table, and they're all speaking Italian, and I'm thinking... Oh, they're talking about me. They're talking about me, <laughs> they're talking about me because they keep looking over, I like, keep doing that, and I'm just thinking... <laughs> Which, I mean, and, and to sit and, and chat to you here, and chat mm. to you like I've done in the past, mm. for someone who's so gregarious and open and talkative, mm. to be in a position where you are kind of sat in the dressing room thinking, I'd love to join in, but mm. I, don't, I don't quite know what, what, what to, to say, say but, how to say it, to say and it. how to get it across. Yeah, so, 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 so because you want to have an input, mm. you know what I mean, and that's this thing, but we didn't start well, it's only when Roy Hodgson came in three months after uh, Bianchi that we started mm. to pick up, um, and then they started wanting to learn English, that was a good thing, they yeah, wanted yeah. me to teach him English, so, but it opened my eyes, it made me grow up, and I was only 28 at the mm. time, but it made me a proper man, you know, and I think people like Jude going out there and Sancho, you know, we see a lot of kids who, at these big clubs who just want to stay in their academies and want to play in the 21s and mm. the 23s. And you know, these guys are prepared to go out there. And I think that's why Jude's just got to just rocket up the, the, you know, the rankings has mm. been very, very good because he's playing for Dortmund, he's playing Champions League football. And you see what it's done with him. But now when he's playing for England, yeah. it looks like he's been there playing there for years and years and years. And to have someone like him and Declan Rice, you know, bears, bears well for the next five, ten years, hasn't it? Captain in the making, do you feel? I think there's two. I think Declan Rice could be a captain. Mm -hmm. I, I really honestly do. I think Bellingham, because Bellingham could do that the same. We need more than just one or two captains. If you go back to our teams, mm -hmm. you go up to Shearer, Adams, Seaman, Sheringham, Gaza. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, all leaders are men. You know, and Sol Campbell. You know, they're leaders are men. That's a tough dressing room, that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, just tough you know, yeah. people like Beckham. You know, you talk about leaders are men. Rio Ferdinand. And I think sometimes we need to get that back into our Indian team, have not just one, two, have big leaders and characters. And I think we're starting to get that. Mm. Um, and the future looks bright for us. Hopefully it looks bright this, 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 <laughs> this, weekend. this, this weekend. Or this month, I should exactly. say. Exactly. Well, fingers this crossed month. it ends in the way that we all want to. Mm. Uh, as I said, the Championship's back um, very shortly. The, mm. the Premier League, it's a bit further down the line. Um, I'm, I'm really appreciative that you're happy to talk about England and then mm. coming back into the Premier League there's two very very big clubs that you know very very well that are in um, that have gone through difficult circumstances first being obviously Manchester United given mm. where they are and given how there's a manager there that's had to deal with a big player in the sense of how Ronaldo's mm -hmm. gone about his business in, in the last few months um, Ten Hag's in charge he's dealt with Ronaldo from the outside looking in, has he done it the way that he should have done? Has he, has he, has he been correct in his actions? I think it's always, it's always going to be tough. You're talking about one of the greatest players ever to grace our football pitches. Mm. Um, and you're talking about a player who's coming to the end of his career uh, and wants to play week in and week out. And um, I think bringing him back here was, was it a commercial thing. People say yes, but then you look at the first year, he got 18 goals in the mm -hmm. Premier League. And he wants to play football. You know, and you think when Carrot took over, he took him to Chelsea, he didn't play against Chelsea. You could just start seeing the signs, you know, didn't play against Berlin, all of mm. a sudden, like, the tantrum started. And I don't think, were they tantrums or were they just frustration out of frustration? I think, you know, he has to play Ronaldo. If you're paying whatever they're paying a week, mm. he has to be playing football. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, because my owner's going to say to me, hang with, but why are you, <laughs> why am I paying this fella? Yeah, to sit on the bench and watch. To sit on the bench, and he's not. And, you know, if that was the case that they were going to look past him, mm -hmm. then they should have done it at the start of the season to mm -hmm. let it go into the season and not play one of the best players of all time. Um, you know, there's going to be repercussions. You mm -hmm. know, you know that. You know what Ronaldo's like. Um, 
And that was the problem. It, all, it then became about Ronaldo and the club, and it took the focus off the team. Mm. You know, and to be the Ten Hag, they've, they've improved. You know, you can see a, um, some light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. You know, you got no disrespect, but you go back prior to that, you know, we were so inconsistent. And, yeah. you know, you couldn't see, you know, you're talking about trying to close the gap between Liverpool City. Now you're talking Arsenal, Chelsea, these type of teams. So, mm. But I just thought sometimes when you're dealing with the best player in the world, you've got to handle it a little bit differently. He's not like any other player. You know, yeah, and, literally on the planet, yeah. Yeah, you've mm. got to handle it differently. And uh, I think kind of that didn't seem the case to me. Mm. You know, and then obviously the interview that came out, um, whether it's born out of sheer frustration, whether it's born out of, well, I'm not going to be here in January. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I can never tell you. I can never tell you. But... Mm. Um, I still think that Ronaldo's got a legacy there. Mm. I don't care whatever he's done, you know, he'll always have a legacy at Manchester United for what he's done for the club. And um, then I'd be interested to see where he goes now. I think he comes to Reading if he wants. On a free <laughs> on in a January, free. Birth, but <laughs> ticks a lot of boxes. Maybe friend. not the wages. The, <laughs> he doesn't need the money. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You know I mean? Just play for the love of the game. Yeah. The, the, the question is obviously mm. when you look at how he's been dealt with, and as ever at that football club and will ever be, is how would have, how would Sir Alex have dealt with that? But mm. I'm intrigued to see the, the comparison because your little break away from management and what I hear from managers that are in the position now that have been players of a, of a certain era, there's a different way of dealing with mm -hmm. the modern player, isn't mm -hmm. there? So it, it's, it's, it seems a slightly redundant question to say, well, well how would Alex Ferguson have, have treated that situation? Well, he would, it would have been a different way of dealing with, as you say, superstars and a different way of dealing with what players are now on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, it would be. I, I think, if, you know, if you're going to bring... You know, if you, if you bring an arrow into your football club, mm. he has to play. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're playing on a Tuesday night, and you might say, listen, Christian, I'm going to leave you out this one, but you're back in on Saturday. Yeah. So at least he knows. Mm -hmm. But you've got an arrow sitting there and knowing if he's, if he's going to play again, if he's mm. not going to play again. And you're right, today's... I found at Blackburn when I was managing the Premier League, I actually mm -hmm. thought the players were like I was, yeah. like Keeney was, or people like that, or Giggsy. Yeah. Those type of kind of players, and they were completely different. Mm. The modern day player was changing. I thought, this is so different to, to, to what I'm accustomed to. And, you know, I struggled to deal with that. Mm. You know, they're good lads, but I struggled to deal with the way they acted. And, you know, you just can't have the hair dryer treatment and you've got to talk to them in the way that you're going to get, you know, <clears throat> the right response from them. Mm. And that, that's, that's not just the Premier League. This mm -hmm. fit was all the way down. Now, even the championship, the players now, you can't just keep hollering and shouting. Mm. You know, and, and to be fair, I'm, as a manager, I'm not a hollering and shouter. I, 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 I've, and that's the reason why I went to Macclesfield, because I went there to... Sh so I don't expect them to do what the players that I play with yes. to do that. If you can't yeah. do that, you're no, you're no good for me. Well, that's the first barrier for what, <clears throat> what is a great player, is being mm. able to get the point across to players that, with the greatest respect, yeah. are going to get nowhere near your level. Mm. And But for you to have the wherewithal to understand, as you quite clearly did, that yeah. I'll ask you to do certain things, but I'll ask you to do things that I know you're capable of. Mm, that's exactly spot mm. on. And, and that, that was the point we did. Learning your trade, I yeah. call it. Learning your trade. Um, and I've kind of acted that way. I think people see me on the football pitch, oh, Inti's always moaning and snarling. And, you know, that's, 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 that's <laughs> no, a, not at all. But that's, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's the will to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the will to win. That's, mm. that's all it is. And I think so that, that's the act you put on to play Premier League yeah. football at the very highest level. Yeah, isn't but it? as a manager, I'm not that type of person. Mm. You know, because you can't be, because they're modern day players and you have to talk to them the right way. And to get the best at them, you have to know the ones that you can, like I can say, have a go at Thomas, for example, because he knows me, he knows mm. what I expect from him, and he can deal with it. But most of the players, you just got to say, be careful how you talk to players. And um, but going back to Ronaldo's situation, I just think it's sad the way it's ended. Mm. It really is. But um, you know, mate, like they've got to move on. They've really got to move on. They look like they're going in the right direction. Uh, long, long way to go. But mm. listen, two, three years ago, we were sitting there thinking they're never going to get close to these teams. But mm. now they look like they're more competitive. It's great to see Rashford back, especially on the scene, yeah. scoring goals. So I think it's looking good for United. One of those teams that they would have been chasing is Liverpool. Mm. Of course, it's been again a, a bit of a. We're just trying to make sense of what's going on with them both mm. on and off the pitch, obviously with the club up for sale as well. I mean, the heights that Jurgen Klopp scaled with that football club and the journey that everyone's been on with regards to who's connected to it. <clears> does it yeah. feel possibly that that cycle might be coming to an end or are we going to see a kind of reimagination of what he's done with them? Yeah, I think it's always tough and you go back to um, Solix Ferguson, the reason why he was so great because he could keep changing teams after three or four years. Mm. You know, I remember when he got rid of me, Mark Hughes, Konchelski, so everyone was going, oh, what are you doing? Must be absolutely mad. And they won the, they won the league the next year, mm. you know what I mean? <clears throat> so was, I that, was that the winning nothing with kids? Yeah, that? that was the one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were, were, were they, just to slightly veer mm. off for a second, these young players coming up, could mm. you see how hungry they were 
but fundamentally how good they were. That yeah, I mean, if you look at the likes of, I mean, Giggsy played with us when he was 17, mm. you know what I mean? And Skullgy, Beckham, Gary Ebel was playing when I was playing, and Nicky Buck was just coming through. So, you know, there was four or five of them, and you thought, yeah, these, not, these are top, top players, mm. you know? And they're players that when, when you train with them, they weren't phased by playing against you. Me, Robson Keane, whoever it may be, they'd be stepping at your heels, and they thought, hang on, these, these, want your, they want, these want your shirt. These, yeah. these actually are hungry, they want your shirt. And I had the mm. same thing when I went to Liverpool with young Stevie Gerrard. Same thing, playing there, kicking me, tackling me, you know what I mean? I thought, this kid's going to be a player because he's, he's got that hunger. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to make the transition is always tough. And Sir Alex is that great because he's done it over years after years and one title after title. Mm. I think when you look at the likes of Liverpool now, they're going through that transition. And the transition has changed because they lost one of the dynamic three mm. going to Bayern Munich. Um, they've gone with Nunes now, so probably a centre forward they've not really had for many, many years. They've mm-hmm. always gone with a kind of small front three. And, um, but you're asking the same players that go to the world every year after year after year. Mm. You know, that front three, you know, they've done it for three, four years, winning Champions Leagues, leagues. It's been phenomenal, really, have they, mm. what they've done. And, and the way they play, because they like to press high, mm-hmm. I think it's like 100 mile an hour, speed, yeah. speed, speed. So to keep doing it in such a demanding league, it, it's going to be tough. And when you lose one of the main men, uh, it, they don't see that quite right at the moment. They have yeah. to play a different way. They're playing a 4-4-2. They've really played that. But listen, it takes time. Mm-hmm. It takes time. And, you know, you talk about one of the greatest managers of all time. And um, it's funny, someone said to me at the start of the season, I think Liverpool went, I think they were bottom four, something like that. <laughs> yeah. I said, so how do you think Klopp should go? And I said to me, what kind of ridiculous question yeah. is that? I said... You know, who's give Liverpool fans, you know what I mean? And I live in the world, so I'm amongst Liverpool fans. So many memories and so many trophies. It's been a joyful It's been unbelievable. Time, it's, it's time it? of football, the way he attacks teams. He's been brilliant. And, and he's a character when he does yeah, his yeah, press yeah. conferences. Yeah. He, he's brilliant, you know. And everyone, from what I get in Liverpool, absolutely idolise him. I think Klopp would be the top would say when he's ready to go. Mm-hmm. He knows when the time's not and up, uh, just like Sir Alex Ferguson did. Yeah. Um, but... The, it's making that transition now. Can he build a side again to mm-hmm. compete with the likes of Arsenal now, City now, United they're going to get stronger, mm-hmm. Chelsea could get stronger, Tottenham. So there's a lot of teams in there now. Um, not before, it was just City, Liverpool for the last three or four years. Now mm-hmm. there's other teams who are doing really, really well. So can he build a team to do that? I'm sure, I'm sure they're finishing the Champions League spot because they, they will do that, that type of team. But um, it takes time, these things. Yeah. And, there's, and there's absolutely, like you said, there's no respite at all. If, mm. if you're not... If, if you're not moving forward, you're literally standing still. People are snapping mm. away at your heels, and, it, and it's gone to show. And in the last couple of years, potentially what the next few years might look like at the very top of the Premier League, something that mm. we're all very excited to <clears> see. <throat> you mentioned Thomas there as well, of course. Uh, reunited back with him here at, mm. at Reading. There was when I was thinking about what I wanted to chat to you about today. There were, we were doing a game with Sky, and it was Derby against MK Dons, and Thomas was playing, and you were there in just a watching brief. Mm. And I had the pleasure of being able to bump into you after the game. And Thomas had been given the man of the match. It must have been Don Goodman or Andy Hinchcliffe given him the man of the match. And he was wonderful. Um, but we were stood chatting. And he came, he came walking up. I say walking, like swaggering up the touchline <laughs> post-match. Man of the match under his arm, a pair of boots in the other. And he had to go and do some press. And he walked up and there was us two and a couple of others and chatting away. And then the press officer came to get him to do more press. And he went... Dad, just all these with the, like his boots, just all that, and, and the man of the match and walked off. And the look on your face is as if to say, does he know who I am? <laughs> and it, 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 it struck me in that moment. Mm. If you're trying to work out what the dynamic is of a pre- professional footballer called Thomas Ince following in the footsteps mm. in the shadow of his dad, Paul Ince, mm. I thought, I don't know whether the question would be, has it affected him? Has, has he lacked confidence in that? Because it didn't seem to me in that instance that that was ever the case. <laughs> I think, um, listen, it's, it's like anything. It's always hard to follow in you know, your dad's footsteps, mm. especially if he's done okay in his, his career. A bit like Schmeichel, a bit like Stevie Bruce. There's been a few of them, you know mm. what I mean? Um, but I think the fact that we were different positions helped. Yeah. I think if he'd have been a midfield player, um, it might have been difficult. I think there's always that element that as you start to go, because he was at Liverpool yes. for most of his, for most of his um, young, young footballing career. And, you know, he's obviously got aspirations to play in the Premier League, play at the top level. Mm-hmm. And of course you want to kind of follow in your dad's footsteps. You know, that, that can't always be the case. Um, but I don't think he's said that as he's got older, I think he's matured. And the pressure of being like, you know, with your Paul Winch's son, mm-hmm. that's kind of way now. Yeah. Your Thomas since 
you know what I mean? You on his own merit. Yeah. On his own merit. And, mm. and that's, that's the most great thing you want for him. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes, there's times of pressure because people say, oh, well, you're not as good as your dad or that. But he's, he's gone past that stage now. What mm. he's done, he's, he's forged a, a very good career. He managed to play in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. He's played ever so well for Reading at the moment. Um, is it a tough combination? No, because I've been there before with him at, at Notts County, at Blackpool. Yeah. Um, he knows when he walks through those gates, he's, just an, he's, he's another player. If not, I'm probably more inclined to be a little bit harder. You him. tend to be with your kids, don't you? you but do. not many people's kids play professional football no, off the back no. of being a professional player. It's funny, yeah, because sometimes I can have a go at him and then Claire would laugh straight to Paul, Claire would say to Paul, to McCool, would say, you had a go at my son, mate. <laughs> but it wasn't tracking his runners, though. <laughs> <like. laughs> you kept losing the ball. I had to tell him. Yeah. Yeah. You kept losing the ball, darling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't have a go at my son, so I get it both ears. You know I, mean? I said to him, when you're here, you're a player. When mm. you come out, when you leave the gates, then you're my son again. Yeah. And, you know, it's... It's great because the eight years that I was out, you kind of, as the kids get older, you know, you kind of don't see them as much. You yeah, know? Yeah. I mean, my daughter's down in London and mm. Thomas is down here, so you don't really see them as much. So for those eight years, it was kind of hard mm -hmm. for me. Now I'm down here, I get to see my daughter, I get to see my son, <clears throat> you know, because family's everything to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, to be able to do that on a more current basis is great. And um, Listen, I, I, I enjoy my time as, as much time as I get to be with him down there mm. and my daughter. It's so, so important to me. But I'm enjoying it at the moment. I'm enjoying the football. I'm enjoying yeah. the players that we've got. I'm enjoying the lads. I'm enjoying the fact there's no there's no egos. They're all in together. They all understand the message. They fight every week. Yeah. Not every win every week, but we fight every week. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got an owner, you know, is the word trust? Probably yes. But he knows how difficult it is this year. He, he does, Mark Bowen knows how difficult it is, so we're all singing from the same hymn sheet mm. um, and then to see where it takes us. Mm. Sometimes you go into a club, and I've always felt this, is that Sir Alex Ferguson always said to me, pick the owner. Club. <laughs> right, He's always okay. said it to me, mm. Sir Alex said to me, and um, <clears throat> I feel like at this club I've got the owner um, who understands, mm. you know, and I'm, I'm sick and tired of seeing managers who get jobs and they say, yeah, he's the right man for the job, we've got a project for two, three years, and then after three months, he's lost his job. Yeah. I, I, I don't like that, I don't get that. Mm -hmm. And I've always been saying, and I've said it so many times, there should be a window for when managers get sacked, like this for players. Absolutely. You know, Dave, because you're talking about, if I had younger kids now, if they bring them all the way down here, mm -hmm. find them new schools, you know, before three months down, you're sacked. So yeah. I think, I've been here eight months now, I think I'm the seventh longest serving manager in the Crazy, championship. Crazy, isn't it? And, and, and it can't be like that, Dave. Mm. So we have to kind of look at this and say, when window shuts, that's it, manage it. So when the window opens, manage and get sacked. There has to be windows, you can't yeah. just keep sucking managers like that. You don't get no consistency. And um, But with this owner, I feel that I'm going to have the best chance to show what I can do as a manager in the next mm -hmm. two or three years. I think he allowed me to do that, hopefully. If I lose the next 15 games, then you deserve to get sacked. Yeah. I get that's that. the very nature of the beast. That's the nature of the beast, that's the game you're in. But mm. with, if, with this owner, I've got more chance of achieving what I want to achieve. Yeah. Um, at this club than I would do anywhere else. It's Coventry up next, of course, another mm. uh, former Man United player, mm. Matt Robbins in charge. Again, another manager that's done Brilliant. a wonderful job. It's been there five years now. In extenuating yeah. circumstances as well. It mm. seems to be the, the case, as you say, you do your licences, you get all the way mm. through your qualifications, and I bet you've both been through experiences mm. quite recently that you, mm. you can only learn by being on the job. He's done a terrific job, hasn't he? He's done a brilliant job, and you know, I've got a lot of love from, from Matt Robbins, you know what I mean, and the style of football he plays. Um, I mean, you look at him at the start of the season, you know, not having the ground, the pitch is no good. And then mm. it's funny because you look at him and you think, oh, they might get tailed away. They've got a lot of games there, but they've got, you either have the points than the games. Yes, on the board, yeah, yeah. But then you watch them play last year and they played some really good football and uh, with the leg kick us up front and they got one of the top, top, top players in the championship. Mm. Uh, if they can keep hold of him in January, um, then they're, 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 I think they'll be up, up there. I really do with the likes of Ohio and Alan, you know, mm. Hamay. They've got some top, top players. Yeah. Um, but it's great to see someone like Mark Wormans in there and, and just keep persevering because there was times I was talking to him going elsewhere mm. and, you know, he's, I'm, not, I'm not sure how long he's been there, whether it's four, five, six years, but you don't often hear that, Dave. You know no, you don't. Someone like that it's, it, 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 it's the exception to the yeah, rather than rule, isn't it, in, in that particular and, and that's And that's where we, know, we all want to get to, all mm. the managers want to get to. Look at the wicked manager, I think he's been there yeah. for 10 years, you know what I mean? Staggering achievement. It's a great achievement, mm. and, but that's down to the owners. That's mm. down to the owners and... You know, when today's society, every time you lose a game, you're getting booed and everything like this. 
it's tough for the owners because mm -hmm. you know sometimes fans want change too quickly and you have to be strong as an owner you can't be trigger happy so to see Mike Robbins doing what he's doing and the style that he's playing it, it, it it's great and um, it's funny because just playing with him I never kind of envisioned being a manager. What was it like as a player then quite quiet or? It, it was quite Quiet, you know what I mean? A bit of a quiet assassin, but not, <laughs> not scaldy. Um, but what a finisher. Yeah. What a finisher. Two feet, it was great. But it's a bit like Mark Hughes, they're very quiet. I can never probably see them being managers. Mm. No, but one thing about United, we've had a lot of people who've gone on to be managers, uh, which says a lot about us as, as, as players. It was but, a very uh, fertile environment yeah, to learn that trade, it was, wasn't it? So um, I'm looking forward to meeting up with them on Saturday. Yeah. Does yeah, that go out the window it. when you stood on the touchline, that friendship? Is it a No, case? no, it doesn't. I think no. listen, listen, people say that, but I think you kind of live a bit more, I don't know what's the use the word respectful, but yeah, <laughs> there's not too much Hollywood and shout. And yeah. then, you know, it's kind of get on with the game, whoever wins, glass of wine after, and we reminisce about the old days. It's the best way to be, isn't it? Being it's able the to reminisce way to be. Really. Last two questions, Paul. <clears throat> Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Um, Paul Ince, the footballer, the midfielder that we've all seen so many times in this era of CDMs and cams and all this type of stuff, you'd have been absolutely fine, wouldn't you, I think, getting up and down? <laughs> um, you know what, I don't know. I mean, you know what the thing is, though? You'd, fa you'd absolutely fancy yourself, though, wouldn't you, to be able to compete, to combat, to be... I, I, I don't think... When you kind of look at all these stats and people talk about, well, he's done 12K and 13K... I kind of look back and I think of someone like, now we kind of seem to have this kind of designated numbers. There's a four, there's a yeah, six, there's yeah. an eight. Which I do still find ten. confusing, full disclosure. I'm thinking, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I look back to people like Stephen Gerrard and Roy Keane and mm -hmm. the great, great Brian Robson. These were box to box, mm. box to box. It wasn't just about, you, you know, you stay here and you go forward or you stay here. You know, and I spent a lot of my career playing a holding midfield role. Mm -hmm. But at times, I still bomb forward. Um, so, unless I'm them, I'm probably worse at pitches. So, from a fitness point of view, I wouldn't say they're much fitter. Mm. I think, the, obviously, the pitches are all pristine and lovely and the ball's lighter and it's, you know, but I don't think I would have struggled in today's game. Absolutely no chance. Mm. Um, and I think none of the top players that I played with would have, would have struggled. Whether we'd have stayed on the pitch long enough is <laughs> a different kind of fish, you know. But yeah, I suppose the parameters that, that people operate now are slightly different. Yeah, I, I can see exactly what you're saying. Mm. And, and going off the back of that, mm. given the fact that we've mentioned England and, and where they find themselves in the World Cup, there's that iconic image of you in Italy after helping England into the actual World Cup. Mm. The full bandage, the blood pouring Soft. down. The, the warrior Soft. mentality. Do, do, we, do we still have warriors? Do, do they still exist? Are they round? Can you see any of them sticking out that would be in the same vein? It's hard. Cause I remember when Jamie Carragher finished retired mm. um, and then Stevie G and I thought, mm, are these the last of the, the warriors? You know, yeah, the characters, the generation. The generation of things. Um, and at this moment, I'd probably say yes. You know, I mean, it's difficult because we are talking about different players, different generations. We've been brought up a different way to what we've been brought up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you speak to likes of Keeney and Mobs and it, they've always had a tough upbringing, yeah. tough upbringing, tough childhood. Mm. Same with myself. Luckily, these players now they don't have that as much so, to mm. a certain degree. So it's hard to have that kind of background, that defiance, that kind of, you know, <laughs> learning what it takes to to live on the streets to survive and take it into a football match where you have you are tough. Mm -hmm. And I speak to people who played before me and they've got so many stories, you know, and you think, wow, these players don't really have that. Yeah. You know, so if I was going to look at probably leadership now, I'd probably look at something like a Jude. Yeah. And then I think he could go on to be that type of leader. I really, mm. I really believe that. But they're a dying breed. Yeah. They are, they are a dying breed, to be fair. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Maybe the game's changed where you don't need so many leaders and characters and... Mm. And we have to hold your hands up. It's a different generation, you know. And um, but I'm not complaining. As long as we win the World Cup, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be fine. Any which way you can Any do it is the main thing, yeah, isn't you it? Can, yeah. well, Paul, it, it, you, you talk yeah. about um, different generations and the game changing. What I can say categorically, it's a pleasure to have you back. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. Thanks for having me.